Hello everyone, welcome to Learn Dax channel. My name is Siddesh and in this video we are going to study four different time intelligence functions in Dax. So the functions that we are going to study in this video are the previous day, previous month, previous quarter and previous year. So what they essentially do is if I have the sales let's say for the 2nd of Jan and I want to see the sales that happened for the 1st Jan, I am going to use the previous day function. What previous month function is going to do is if I have the sales for the month of April and I have the sales that have happened for the month of May and I want to check the sales that happened in the previous month which is April, I am going to use the previous month function. What the previous quarter function is going to do is if I have the sales for Q1, Q2, Q3 and Q4 and let's say I want I am in Q2 right now and I want to see the sales that happened in Q1, I'll use the previous quarter function. And likewise, the previous year function is like, let's say we are in 2023 or, or rather we are in 2024 and I want to see the same that have happened in the year 2023, I will use the previous year function. So let's see how this function work in action. So let me go to the data set and I have taken the product and sales data set. I leave the link for this data set in the description so you can practice along and understand the concept. And I have also created another table for this demonstration which is the date table and I'll also leave this table all in the description so you can use this table create the data model and work along and see how these functions operate so let me first of all quickly create a sales amount measure because we are going to calculate the sales that happened previous day the sales that happened previous month the sales that happened previous year the sales that happened previous quarter so like we have created in a in many of the previous videos we create the sales amount measure which is nothing but sum x sales table sales quantity into sales price so if i pull this okay what's the error okay i didn't mention the price so if i quickly mention the price and pull it here so this is the sales amount so the sale that happened on the 1st of jan is 2400 the sales that happened on the 2nd of jan is 800 on the 3rd jan it is 450 and likewise we have the sales that happened for 20 different occasions now the formula for previous day is very simple all i have to do is i'll create previous day sales is equal to calculate sales sorry calculate sales amount and then previous day and I will use the sales date table now this day a list of blank values why we get blank values is because when we are providing the sales date as the argument in the previous day function I reckon it does not have a contiguous set of dates that it can work with and probably that's why we, it shows us blank values and when I created a date table which had a contiguous uh, set of values over the period on which the sales have occurred I am getting the correct output so maybe that could be the root cause of this issue if you know the root cause of the issue then please let me know in the comments and i'll be very happy to learn from you and so if we want to get around this issue what we do is we will create a relation between the sale date from the sales table and a date table that has the dates starting from the 1st of jan 2022 right up to 12th of december 2023 because that's the window in which all of our sales have happened so the moment I do that and I go to the visual, I immediately see that now the values are being displayed. So that is one issue that we have resolved. And now let's verify if the output that we are getting is correct or not. So that sale that happened on the 1st of Jan was 2400. So in the second row, I am getting the sales that happened the previous day, which is the 1st of Jan is 2400. When I go to the 3rd of Jan, it says the previous day sales which is supposed to be the sales that happened on 2nd of Jan which is equal to 800 is showing up in this row and likewise for the different rows so this is what the previous day function does now we are done with the previous day function let's shift our focus to the previous month function 
Now in order to create the previous month measure all we are going to do is instead of using the previous day we are going to use the previous month function so it's it's that simple previous month sales is equal to calculate to sales amount previous month and uh, either i can use the sales date or i can use the date table both works fine because in this case we have bi directional filtering or we can say the relationship between them is such that you can see there are two arrows so cross filter direction is both so values can flow either from this table to this table or from this table to this table so we can use either of those two columns either the sale date column from the sale table or the date column from the date table so once i create this measure and quickly pull values on this table or let me do one thing let me copy this table onto this page and so that we have some more space here so we can also accommodate some more measures so if i pull out the previous month sales so i get that the sales for the month of january are 5570 which means they are the aggregation of all the sales that have happened over a period of these 10 days now what i'll do quickly is i'll go to the table view and i'll filter the dates such that they are showing the first 10 dates or rather let me go to the transform data view let me go to the power query this is an easier way of uh, verifying if we are doing it correctly or not let me just filter for the first 10 dates so first second third fourth fifth sixth and we have wait not these ones first second third fourth fifth sixth seventh eighth ninth and tenth and now if i close and apply then i would get okay so now the sales amount for the first 10 days turns out to be 5570 which constitutes the sales that have happened in the month of january So now, if I remove the filter, we just wanted to verify that the number that we got in the previous month row, which was five five seven zero for the month of January, is actually five five seven zero. So we have verified that. So now let me undo the changes and then show the original table. So I'll quickly go to the transform data and I will remove the filters from that table so that we are able to see all the data. refreshing okay so now we have the sales that have happened in the month of january as 5570 which is showing up in the row for the month of february because the previous month sales are for january we are in the month of february so it shows 5570 now the sales that have happened in the month of february are 1200 so in the month of march the previous month sales shows 1200 likewise the sales that have happened in the month of april are 50 and so the sales in the previous month for the month of may is shown as 50 so that is the previous day and previous month completed now let's take a look at the previous year and the previous quarter in order to simplify this table what i'm going to do is instead of showing all the values i just want to show the i just want to show the quarter and the year so that it simplifies the view so let me just quickly duplicate this page i will what i will do is i'll remove this previous day previous month and i will use something called as a date hierarchy and i'll just have year in this and i'll remove the sale id product id and price as well so all i have is the sales amount for this year for the year 2022 and for the year of 2023 now if i use the sales amount last year what i'm going to see is in the row for the year 2023 it's going to show me 1590 as the value so that simple so if i do that if i create a new measure and i call it previous your sales is equal to calculate sales amount previous 
here and I can either use the date from the date table or the date from the sales table but as a good practice I believe that we should refer from dates from the dimension table which in this case is the date table so I'm going to use the date table and I will quickly pull this here and there you go we see 1590 as the sales that have happened in the previous year which is the sales that have happened in the year of 2022 now we are left with the last one which is the previous quarter sales so let me just copy this table and instead of having the year let's have the year and quarter so let me change the setting to show rate hierarchy again and let's see the year and quarter i don't want the day i don't want the month as well yeah i just i have 2022 quarter one 2022 quarter two i have 2023 quarter one i have 2023 quarter two and i'm also going to remove this previous year sales so i have quarterly sales that have happened for the year 2022 and 2023 now i will create a new measure i will call it sales previous quarter sales is equal to calculate sales amount previous quarter and I will use the date from the date table and if I drag this measure on the screen I get the sales that happened in the 2022 quarter 1 were 250 which is displayed in the row for 2022 quarter 2 the sales that happened in the year 2023 quarter 1 are displayed in the row which corresponds to the 2023 quarter 2 so we get the sales that have happened for the previous quarter so this brings us to the end of this video if you have any feedback for me please let me know in the comments so i can improve my future videos and if you find this video valuable please share it with your friends and like I say in, at the end of every video, thanks for watching and happy learning.